Botox is really a way to relax the muscles. The commonest area is this area between the eyes, so we all know when we go out in the sun or if we squint or if we yell, we get these lines here. So that's the number one place to put Botox. The second commonest place is what's called the crow's feet, and it doesn't change the lines at rest. So if you have little lines here, that's not going to change with Botox. What will change with Botox is when you smile and you get more lines, if you put a little bit of Botox in, it doesn't get rid of every line it diminishes the lines. Um, everybody, or almost everybody, hates the Hollywood plastic face. There's absolutely no reason why you have to look like that. It's all in degree. The person putting the, the Botox, or for, for myself, when I, put, I really strive for a natural look. And um, so it's really just the degree of Botox. So if you put it the right amount, you'll have a natural look, you'll look like yourself, you still have your own smile. So that's the second commonest area. The third commonest area is the forehead. And some people have heard that you can get a droopy eyelid. It's all based on the degree of Botox that you put in. I tend to be very conservative. And if you concentrate on the central area, that's very, very unlikely to happen. Botox um, literally takes a second to do. It's a few little tiny shots. It's an extremely small needle. It's still a needle prick, so you will feel a little discomfort, but it's, you know, for a few seconds. The important thing to know, too, about Botox is it doesn't work right away. It starts to work within four to 10 days and typically lasts about four months. It doesn't matter what you do afterwards. I know some doctors still tell you to smile, not smile, exercise, don't exercise. I think that's total rubbish. I let my patients do whatever they want. If they want to go to the gym, they want to go swimming, they want to take a shower, I don't think it makes any difference. It's a biochemical reaction that's going to happen regardless. Like any little needle prick, you want to avoid taking aspirin, buffering, etc. because they're blood thinners, so there's a little more chance you get a bruise from Botox. But in general, it's extremely well tolerated, it's quite predictable, does a very nice job, and I do a very large amount of Botox. So the other question people say, well, what's a filler then? So fillers are exactly what they sound like. You're injecting a substance to fill in. Um, as we age, if you think of the skin as the wrapping paper and our face as the package, one of the big changes in plastic surgery has been traditionally like 25 years ago, people were getting facelifts at very young ages. And the idea is that as we age, even though we might be you know, a little plumper than we want in our midsection, we actually lose fat in our face. And when you lose fat in the face, everything sags a little bit. The big change in plastic surgery over the last probably 15 years is to start building up the face. And the easiest way to build up the face is with fillers. A lot of the ones you think of now are Restylane, Juvederm, Volume is one of the new products for along the zygomatic arch, radius. So the places you're going to put fillers are going to be along the infraorbital rims. Um, the tear troughs is a very common area. Um, we lose fat in this area, and when we lose fat, everything sinks in, and that creates the darker shadows that um, almost everybody's aware of as they age. So we can put fillers there. Sometimes we'll inject them in the nasal labial folds. Sometimes we'll put them in the cheeks because if you build up the cheeks, it helps pull up the nasal labial folds. Another very common area as we age is people notice jowls, but in many, many patients, it's really not so much jowls as they're losing fat in this area. And if you think of your face as mountains and valleys, rather than make the mountain smaller, if we build up the valley, that mountain isn't so tall. So I do a lot of fillers in this area, and it really buys people many, many years. How long do fillers last? It varies from company to company on which type of fillers, but they're really good products now. They'll often last anywhere from 10 to 16 months. Sometimes they'll last several years. And it's a quick off-the-shelf procedure. Obviously, like everything, there's a million potential risks, but the reality is they're very, very safe. Serious complications are very uncommon. The commonest risk you get with any needle prick, whether it's Botox or fillers, is you can get a bruise. Any um, plastic surgeon or anybody that injects these fillers that says they've never had a bruise is not telling the truth. They're just not doing very many. Most people don't bruise, so I don't want to scare you away. It's also a very tiny bruise from the needle poke, so it's not like somebody punching in your face and you're all black and blue. It's a little tiny bruise, and that can happen. After the filler's injected, I don't think it matters what you do. You can go to the 
gym, you can work out, I think you can go out in the sun, um, and the results are very, very good and people are very happy with that.